now, the greatest radio shows of all time. Suspense. The Shadow Node. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Classic radio theater. The Great Gildersleeve. Fibber McGee and Molly. Dragnet. Gunsmoke. The Lone Ranger. Now, step back into our time machine with your host, Wyatt Cox. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. Comedy this hour as we go back right in the middle of World War II. February 16th, 1943, George Burns and Gracie Allen from 80 years ago today. And their guest is Veronica Lake. We thank you for tuning in on this uh, sure happy it's Thursday. This is the 16th day of February. Uh, This is the 47th day of the year, 318 days remaining till we get to 2024. Studebaker Brothers Wagon Company, established on this date in 1852, it was the precursor of the auto manufacturer. National Deaf Mute College, established in Washington, D.C. on this date in 1857, uh, becoming the first school for the advanced education of the deaf. It would later, later become Galuet University. In New York City, the Jolly Corks organization renamed itself on this date in 1868 to the Benevolent Protective Order of the Elks. Ladies Home Journal published for the first time on this date in 1883. Howard Carter unsealed the burial chamber of Tutankhamun in 1923. 1937, Wallace Carruthers received a patent for nylon. On this date in 1959, Fidel Castro became the premier of Cuba. Khrushchev is good friend, good Cuban friend, wonderful person. What, what do you want that we do? You leave us without petroleum. Khrushchev eat petroleum. You leave us without sugar. Khrushchev buy sugar. Your leaders speak about aggression to Cuba. Khrushchev speak about the defending Cuba. Khrushchev is friends. Don't you know? Soviet government have no monopoly in Cuba. No factory, no investment, no colony. Never will the Cuban people feel so free as now. Are you a communist? Well, well, wait for the history. The history will take what we are. Fidel Castro talking to reporters on this date in 1959. On this date in 1963, the Beatles got their first number one record, Please Please Me. In Haleyville, Alabama, on this date in 1968, the first 911 phone system went into effect. Will the Still Chamberlain scoring his 30,000th point on this date in 1972? In 1982, Harrison Williams sentenced for his part in the Abscam scandal on February 16, 1982. In this report, Williams tells reporters, no, he did nothing wrong. I did no wrong. There was no wrongdoing. And that makes this verdict, obviously, most difficult to bear. Now, prior to a Senate vote on his expulsions, Williams resigned on March 11, 1982. Sentenced to three years in prison, he served two years in federal prison. First time in over 80 years a senator had spent time in prison. Williams also charged a $50,000 fine in addition to prison time. Williams died of cancer on November 17, 2001, at the age of 81. The trial of Don, of, of uh, John Demanjanjuk, accused of being a Nazi guard dubbed Ivan the Terrible in Treblinka extermination camp, started in Jerusalem on this date in 1987. In 1989, Robin Givens spoke to the media about her divorce from Mike Tyson one day earlier. He's got a side to him that's scary. Michael is intimidating to say the least. I think that there's, there's a time when he cannot control his temper, and that's frightening. Now, while newspapers reported Gibbons received a divorce settlement of over $10 million from her marriage to Tyson, she denied the report, 
telling Essence magazine writer Patrick Henry Bass, I didn't receive one dime. U.S. and U.K. warplanes bombed the suburbs of Baghdad on this date in 1991, injuring at least 11 civilians, killing three others in the Gulf War. And in 2005, the National Hockey League canceled the entire 2004-2005 regular season and playoffs, becoming the first major sports league in North America to do so over a labor dispute. Because the solution has not yet been attained, it is no longer practical to conduct even an abbreviated season. Accordingly, I have no choice but to announce the formal cancellation of play for 2004-2005. NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman, it was the first time the Stanley Cup was not awarded since 1919, and the second time after the 1994-95 Major League Baseball strike that the postseason of a major professional sports league in North America were canceled. 2006, the last Mobile Army Surgical Hospital, MASH, decommissioned by the U.S. Army. 2012, a federal judge in Detroit ordered life in prison for Omar Farouk Amanullah, a Nigerian man who tried to blow up a packed Northwest jetliner with a bomb concealed in his underwear. Passing away on this date in history, the man who played Colonel Henry Blake in the 1970s film version of MASH, Roger Bowen, uh, also Pro wrestler Johnny Grunge of Public Enemy and Leslie Gore. And, you know, she said her part was her party. She could cry if she wanted to. Uh, born on this date in history, Edgar Bergen. Also actor Hugh Beaumont, the dad in Leave it to Beaver. Also uh, Bill Doggett, uh, a, a great musician. Jazz, rhythm and blues. He was good. Uh, Patty Andrews of the Andrews Sisters, born on this date. Sonny Bono, also born on this date in history. Uh, also, James Ingram, Margot Hemingway, and uh, Lisa Loring, Wednesday on the 60s TV version of The Addams Family, who passed away just this last January, uh, earlier this year, at the age of 64. Uh, let's see, turning 70 years old today, if you've ever played Mystery House, King's Quest, Phantasmagoria, you were looking at uh, the work of uh, R R Roberta Williams and her husband Ken, computer game designers. Roberta Williams, 70 today. Commander Jody LaForge, Jordy Labor, is it Jordy? Well, Commander LaForge, just leave it at that. In Star Trek The Next Generation, also Reading Rainbow, LeVar Burton, 66. From uh, SVU, Ice T, 65. Uh, Duran Duran's Andy Taylor, who is suffering from stage 4 prostate cancer, we wish him the best, 63. The ninth Doctor Who, Christopher Eccleston, 59. The uh, pro wrestler known as Gangrel, David Heath, 54. And the uh, Wanda the Scarlet Witch, WandaVision in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Elizabeth Olsen, turns 34. Those just a few of the people celebrating the 16th day of February is their birthday. If this is your birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Tangy, you Mrs. Miller. From 80 years ago today, February 16th, 1943, George Burns and Gracie Allen and, and, and Veronica Lake. That's coming up next here on this Sure Happy It's Thursday edition of Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite radio station. Born Constance Oakleman in 1922... The screen career of Veronica Lake can only be described as a streaming, soaring skyrocket that came crashing down to earth. She, uh, her first role in motion pictures uh, was in 1939. That would make her just 17 
when she appeared in the motion uh, under contract to MGM and uh, starred in a little role or appeared in the play Thought for Food in January of 1939. And then she appeared in Sorority House in 1939. And then All Women Have Secrets, Dancing Co-Ed, Young As You Feel, and 40 Little Mothers, the first time she ever let her hair down on screen. Um, she attracted the interest of Fred Wilcox, an assistant director. Uh, she ended up being in a military drama, the 1941 I Wanted Wings. And they changed her name from Constance Keene to Veronica Lake. According to Wilcox, her eyes calm and clear like a blue lake, the inspiration for her new name. The film became a big hit, made the teenage lake a star overnight, even before the film came out. She was dubbed the Find of 1941. Her long blonde hair accidentally fell over her right eye during a take. It created a peekaboo effect, and quite frankly, that's how she was remembered for all of her life. Uh, she starred in a number of films, and of course, she was the pinup girl during World War II. Uh, and uh, she did a lot of interesting things uh, <laughs> during the years. But then, a series of setbacks that derailed her career. Her personality led to her acquiring a reputation for being difficult to work with. And, and, and she was six months pregnant when filming began on the movie Sullivan's Travels. And uh, it upset uh, director Preston Sturgis. And uh, she did not get along well with her co-star, Joel McRae. Um, it, was, it was a very, very difficult time. Uh, by the time the 50s came around, uh, she really fell out of favor with studios. And uh, it did not go well. She was in her final film, Flesh Feast, in 1970. And it wasn't much. So all I can tell you is uh, uh, she came back traveling in Vermont complaining of stomach pains in June of 1973. Checked into University of Vermont Medical Center, cirrhosis of the liver, and acute hepatitis, acute kidney injury. She died July 17th, 1973. She was just 50 years of age. Veronica Lake, the uh, story of her life, summaried, and uh, here we have an episode of George Burns and Gracie Allen. February 16th, 1943, 80 years ago today, with guest star Veronica Lake. <laughs> well, hello, come right in. Oh, George, we've got company. <laughs> This is Bill Goodwin speaking for Lever Brothers, makers of Swan, the new white floating soap. Well, it's Tuesday night again. Time for another pleasant visit with George Burns and Gracie Allen, their guests, Veronica Lake, Jimmy Cash, and Paul Whiteman and his music. And now meet the people who live in the Burns house, George and Gracie. Uh, what are you doing, sweetheart? Uh, writing a letter to your mother? No, I'm writing a wedding announcement. A wedding announcement? Mm-hmm. Listen and see if it sounds right. Mr. and Mrs. Samuel J. Sagwell take pleasure in announcing the forthcoming marriage of their daughter, Tootsie, to Mr. William Goodwin. The ceremony will minute. be held... Wait a minute. <laughs> Bill Goodwin is going to marry Tootsie Sagwell? Is that right? I don't believe it. But it's true, George. Of course, it's a secret. Very few people know about it yet. Not even Bill. <laughs> I thought so. What horrible thing are you cooking up for that poor guy? Is it so horrible to marry a girl who looks exactly like Veronica Lake? Gracie, Tootsie has a face like a New England boiled dinner. She doesn't look like Veronica Lake. But she will, dear. Professor Robinson will fix that. Who? Professor Hubble Robinson. Hubble Robinson? Yes. The beauty expert. Mm. He sells the beauty kit guaranteed to make people look like their favorite movie stars. Oh, for Pete's sake. So, Tootsie decided on Veronica Lake and we're going to get started today. How long do you expect it will take? Oh, just a couple of hours. Veronica's a very small girl, you know. <laughs> Gracie, you're wasting your time. This Professor Robinson must be a quack. He's nothing of the sort, George. A uh, Mr. Carol Nye of Burbank wanted to be like Clark Gable, and after the professor's treatment, he not only looked like Gable, but he had gorgeous legs. <laughs> 
He had gorgeous legs? Yes. You see, his handwriting was hard to read. You know whether he wanted Gable or Grable. So, so he, he gave them both. Yes. I see what you mean. <laughs> That's really an amazing professor. Yes. And then another customer got to look so much like Gene Autry that his wife left him. Horses kept following him home. <laughs> Gracie, Bill Goodwin will never marry Tootsie oh, Sagwell. I'll answer it, dear. Maybe Tootsie. Oh, hello, Mr. Postman. Good morning, Mrs. Burns. <laughs> How are you this lovely, lovely morning? Oh, I'm fine, thanks. And you're looking well, too. Yes, this is the kind of weather that brings the roses to my cheeks. <laughs> you know, I envy you, Mr. Postman. You're always so healthy. I take no credit, Mrs. Burns. If other people used my system, they could be as hale and hearty as I am. Well, what is your system? Deep breathing. As I walk along, I inhale like this. <laughs> and then I exhale like this. <laughs> oh, how wonderful. Well, what mail did you bring me today? A package, Mrs. Burns. Here you are. Oh, it's just what I've been waiting for. Tootsie's beauty kit from the professor. Thanks, and goodbye, Mr. Postman. Goodbye, Mrs. Burns. Remember, keep smiling. <laughs> oh, George, it came, it came. Professor Robinson's beauty kit is here. Great. Tomorrow I won't be able to tell Tootsie from Veronica. Oh, yes, you will. I thought of that. You see, Veronica Lake uses a certain perfume... So Tootsie is going to just douse herself with that perfume. Well? Well, if she smells a little like Veronica Lake, she is Veronica Lake. But if she smells a lot like Veronica Lake, she's Tootsie. <laughs> so, suppose she smells like Tootsie. Well, in that case, ignore her. She's a stranger. <laughs> I'll cut her dead. Oh, I just can't wait for the wedding. Tootsie and Bill are going to be... Come in. Gracie, did it come? Is it here? Yes, Tootsie, it just came. Oh, wonderful. Glamour, glamour, you shall be mine. <laughs> oh, this is murder. I'm getting out of here. Oh, Tootsie, don't mind him. He's just a cynic. But you know what they say, live and learn. <laughs> oh, who cares about learning? I want to live. <laughs> Open the box, Gracie. Oh, all right. Oh, God, I just can't wait to see what's in it. Oh, me either. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Just look at all these things. Oh, what are those bottles of brown stuff? Oh, that's mud for mud packs. See what it says in the label? Procured from a ditch in Veronica Lake's own hometown. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? I wonder what that funny-looking gadget is. Oh, that's a no-shortener. You see, where Veronica's turns up, yours keeps right on going. <laughs> oh, we'll have to fix that. Look, here's the most important thing of all. This mask. You have to wear that over your face during the entire treatment. Oh, I just can't wait to look like Veronica Lake. I've looked like me for so long. <laughs> yes, I know. Hello, Gracie. Gosh, you look cute this morning. Hello, Tootsie. Gosh. <laughs> oh, Bill. Bill, you're not supposed to see the bride just before the wedding. Really? Well, who's having a wedding? <laughs> Gracie, Gracie, is Tootsie finally getting herself a man? Yes. <laughs> Who is the poor sap? <laughs> you. <laughs> Me? I wouldn't marry Tootsie Sagwell if they threw rice and new shoes at the wedding. <laughs> but Bill, you'd marry Veronica Lake, wouldn't you? Veronica Lake? Well, who wouldn't? Gee, that Lake. Bill, uh, why do you like her? Well, I tell you, Tootsie, whenever I think of a lake, I think of a swan. And swan, you know, is the new white floating soap. <laughs> Purer than the finest Castiles, a regular suds and whiz. Uh, Bill, Professor Robinson, the beauty expert, is going to make me look just like Veronica Lake. Hmm, Professor Robinson should be with the camouflage corps. <laughs> Listen, if he can do that, he can make a 20-ton tank look like a bar of swan. But don't try to wash the dishes with a tank. Use swan. Swan is great for washing the dishes because it suds faster than other white floating soaps. And since swan is purer than the finest Castiles, it's kind to your hands. So use swan for every soap and water job in the house. Now, Bill, you come back in exactly two hours and propose to Tootsie. By then, she'll look like Veronica. Yeah. Ah, oh, poor Tootsie. She has to wear that terrible old mask for two hours. Yeah, it is ugly. I haven't got it on yet. <laughs> 
servant will break me in two and call me Swan. By the way, Swan breaks in two with an easy twist of the wrist, you know. So you can use half in the kitchen for dishes and cleaning and the other half in the bathroom for your hands and face. Gracie, we better get started with the treatment. You come back in two hours, Bill, and I'll be a glamour girl. I'll be back, Tootsie. That I've got to see. Uh, oh, Bill, when you marry Tootsie, George and I will want to give you something. What would you like? Novocaine. <laughs> February 16th, 1943, George Burns and Gracie Allen here on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. The news from 80 years ago today comes up next. Classic Radio Theater family, you know our friend Mike Lindell has a passion to help everyone get the best sleep of your life. He didn't stop by just creating the best pillow. He created the best bed sheets ever. They look and feel great, which means an even better night's sleep for me because, you know, I'm working like 67 hours a day. Now, Mike's offering the best deal on this Giza Dreams bed sheets ever. You can get a set of Giza sheets for as low as $29.98. You'll never want to sleep on anything else once you sleep slept on a set of Giza Dream sheets. A special offer for you right now. You can get a set of Giza sheets for as low as $29.98. Call 1-800-928-4715. Use the promo code WYATT or go to MyPillow.com. Use the promo code WYATT. It's good on anything on the website. That number again, 1-800-928-4715. Use my promo code WYATT. Thanks for spending part of your Thursday with us here on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. We're listening to an episode of George Burns and Gracie Allen as it was originally broadcast on Tuesday, February 16th, 1943, 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time in the uh, newspapers of that Tuesday 80 years ago. These were some of the headlines. In headlines from the war, Germans advanced 20 miles on southern Tunisia front to end uh, endanger American position at Gofska. Inexperienced American troops suffer at enemy hands. The fall of Kartoff is imminent as Nazis admit defenses before the city are cut open. 725,000 Nazi troops believed and trapped in Rostov area. Germany and Italy's cities burned and bled following British U.S. aerial attacks on Cologne, Milan, Spezia, and Dunkirk. Enemy bombers are crossing the southeastern coast of England. Heavy weekend air activity in both South and North Pacific, resulting in a loss of eight U.S. planes, 15 Japanese planes, and damaging uh, one of Japanese cargo ships, Shortland Island believed under development as a new enemy base. Most influential English people regard independence for India as a question for India's diverse religious and racial factions to settle. For Lord Haley, for 40 years, a high civil officer in India said last night in an exclusive interview with the United Press at the British Embassy, where he's the guest of Lord Halifax, the quiet-spoken British peer, described Mohandas Gandhi's current 21-day fast as regrettable, but doubted it could prevent India's problems and predicted it would have an injurious effect on India's war effort. <laughs> Assistant Secretary of State A.A. A. Burrell Jr. revealed yesterday there is a general understanding among the United Nations that international agreements for post-war civil aviation rights on an equitable basis will be reached in due time. He also disclosed in the midst of mounting congressional agitation for post-war economic planning now that five government agencies have been considering for many months the problem of protecting American post-war aviation rights. Meanwhile, the House Interstate and Foreign Commerce Committee approved a bill that would drastically revise the 1938 Civil Aeronautics Act and call for investigation by government agencies of all phases of post-war civil aviation. By doing so, it got the jump on support of legislation for creation of a separate rate house at the Aviation Committee, 
uh, which would deal with post-war civil aviation problems. <laughs> Chairman Walter F. George, the Democrat of Georgia of the Senate Finance Committee, predicted last night any change over to pay-as-you-go income tax collection will undoubtedly be followed by still higher taxes. Participating in a radio broadcast on the Columbia Network with Secretary of the Treasury Henry Morgenthau Jr. and Chairman Robert L. Doughton, uh, Democrat of North Carolina of the Tax-Making Houseways and Means Committee, he joined them in stressing the need for filing 1942 tax returns and making an initial quarterly payment, regardless of congressional action on a current collection plan. Extension of Social Security benefits to members of the armed forces will be proposed by the Social Security Board in its annual report to Congress. That according to well-informed sources. Some board members believe inclusion of the nation's fighting men and women might obviate the need for future legislation, extending special benefits to veterans, benefits that were found necessary following World War I when the first soldier's bonus bill was enacted. Those some of the day's top news stories as reported in the newspapers of Tuesday, February 16, 1943. On your radio, George Burns and Gracie Allen, which continues now on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Well, come on, Tootsie, lie down on the table. All right, Gracie. I think I'll start off with the mud pack. Now, hold still. <laughs> oh, isn't it wonderful? You have Veronica Lake face in no time. I know, and I'll have her ears even sooner than most mud went. <laughs> hey, I have a wonderful idea, Tootsie. I'll call Veronica and tell her to come right over. What for? Well, so we can tell how we're doing. I'll stand you both side by side, and if I can tell you apart, you're not done yet. That's a marvelous idea, Gracie. But do you know her? Oh, sure. I see her at the market all the time. We don't get our meat from the same butcher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just think. Veronica Lake and I are going to be twins. Gracie, how about you and Hedy Lamar looking alike? Oh, well, I don't think Hedy Lamar would want to go through all this fuss just to look like me. <laughs> sort of pulling my face together. Is that good? Well, of course it's good. Just think of yourself as a big pan of fudge that's beginning to harden. <laughs> yes, that's just what I'll do. Oh, gee, won't it be wonderful when I go out walking with my new face on? <laughs> then maybe the man will whistle at me. Didn't the man ever whistle at you, Tootsie? No, Gracie. A couple of times a man has puckered his lips like he was going to whistle, but what came out was a different noise entirely. <laughs> Oh, oh, you poor dear. Well, anyway, Tootsie, you shouldn't be thinking of other men. You're going to marry Bill Goodwin. <laughs> oh, that must be Veronica. You just lie there, Tootsie, and, and keep that mask on your face. Hello, Gracie. Oh, come on in, Veronica. You sounded awfully excited on the phone, Gracie. What's up? Well, I'm making my friend Tootsie Sagwell beautiful, and I need your help. Tootsie Sagwell? Oh, yeah, she's that tall person who looks something like a woman. Yes, yes, well, that's Tootsie. She's taking Professor Robinson's beauty treatment that's guaranteed to make her look exactly like a movie star in two hours. Any particular movie star? Yes, you. Good heavens. Yeah, and that's, that's why I need your help. I want you to stand beside Tootsie so we can see if there are any places where a little sidewell still shows through the lake. <laughs> Come on, Veronica, she's in here. Wait, before we go in, I'd better tie a string around my finger. What for? I don't want to get mixed up and forget which one is me. Oh, oh well, don't bother. I'll try to remember. Come on. Tootsie, this is Veronica Lake. Oh, Miss Lake, I, I hope you don't mind that I picked you for a model. I'm very flattered, Tootsie. You know, Veronica, I've, I've always wanted to swap beauty secrets with you. Well, let's not swap. I'll just tell you what I know. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, dear. If, if Bill doesn't marry me this time, I'll just give up. You're counting on this experiment to get a husband? Yes, I've tried everything else. Well, she certainly has. Remember when they took away your permit to carry a gun, Tootsie? <laughs> yes, the old meanies. 
Oh, I failed so many times, Veronica. You know, they say that the bridesmaid who catches the bride's bouquet will be the next to get married. But it never worked for me. What a shame. I've been a bridesmaid 20 times. Every time I jump way up in the air and catch the bouquet and it's gotten me nothing. Oh, well, I wouldn't say that, Tootsie. It, it got you an offer to play second base for the Washington Senators. <laughs> I almost wish I'd taken it. Oh, Gracie, where are you, dear? Oh, George is home. Uh, Veronica, you stay here with Tootsie. I'll be right back. Hello. Oh, George, you're just in time. In a few minutes, we're going to unveil Tootsie. Gracie, this idea is ridiculous. If people get to look like movie stars, don't you think a lot more would be doing it? Don't you think I'd like to look like Charles Boyer? Well, certainly. Well, you don't have to be so definite about it. <laughs> but, George, if you want to look like him, you can. Professor Robinson had Charles Boyer's face marked down to twenty-seven fifty this month. It's a special. <laughs> Only twenty-seven fifty. Yeah, huh? of course that's not including the eyes. Oh, oh, no eyes. No, those big soulful Boyer eyes are extra. Mm. How much does he get for those? Well, how many would you want? One or two? <laughs> well, I'm no piker. Make it two. Ah, make it three. When I go, I go. <laughs> George Burns, I don't like your attitude. You'll be sorry you acted like this when I walk out of that with a new Tootsie Sagwell. You just stay here. I'll be right back. Gracie, I can tell by the look on your face that George doesn't believe in Professor Robinson. Oh, no, he doesn't. Oh, I get so mad at him sometimes. Honestly, he wasn't my husband. I divorced him. <laughs> Gracie, is it almost time to take the next... How does your face feel? Does it feel like Veronica Lake's face? Well, I don't know how Veronica Lake's face feels. <laughs> oh, how does it feel, Veronica? Oh, I don't know. I've had it so long, it almost seems like part of me. Oh. <laughs> Tootsie, it's two o'clock. Time to take the mask off. Oh, hurry. Oh, oh. Hold still. There. Well, how do I look? Oh, dear. I shouldn't have used that witch hazel. Why not? Mm, I'm afraid the bottle had too much witch and not enough hazel. <laughs> be here in ten minutes. He'll never propose to me now. Oh, don't feel that way, Tootsie. Men don't propose to women because they're beautiful. No. I'll bet lots of men have proposed to you. Well, yes. But only because I'm a good cook. <laughs> I can't even cook. <laughs> well, wait. Wait. I've got an idea. Veronica, you've got to help us. You've got to pretend that you're Tootsie Sagwell. Me? Yes. After she's worn the mask a little longer, Tootsie will look like you anyway. So you just pretend you're Tootsie long enough for Bill Goodwin to propose to you. Yes, Veronica. Just accept him and I'll take it from there. <laughs> but this is the craziest thing I've ever heard oh, of. please, Veronica, do it for me. Well, all right. Oh, thanks. And what a chance this is to teach my husband a lesson. Now, when I call you, come out as Tootsie. All right, Gracie. Um, well, George... We took the mask off Tootsie. You did, huh? Yeah. Now I want you to see her. Oh, Tootsie! Miss Gracie, did you call me? Uh, yes, I did, Tootsie. What can he sing like Veronica Lake? <laughs> February 16th, 1943, George Burns, Gracie Allen on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. We'll close out this week of Classic Radio Theater with an episode of The Halls of Ivy starring Ronald and Manita Coleman, a story of prejudice in the mid-20th century. Dr. Hall uses the opportunity of an address in the Ivy Chapel to speak of tolerance and brotherhood after a Chinese student leaves Ivy because of prejudice. The program from 73 years ago, February 17, 1950, on Friday's Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Now the conclusion of George and Gracie, George Burns, Gracie Allen, 80 years ago, February 16, 1943. All right, all right. I knew it was Veronica Lake all the time, and so will Bill Goodwin. Look, he'll, he'll, he'll never believe she's Tootsie. He will, too. Veronica's a very fine actress. All you have to do, Veronica, is imagine you are Tootsie Bagwell. I don't believe I have quite that much imagination. Oh, you can do it. Just get that look of hers in your eye. You mean that come-hither look? Well, it's really stronger than that. It's more of a come-hither, stay-hither, and don't go thither look. I see. I better know how she acts with men, too, so I can give a good performance. How does she react when a man asks her for a date? Well, let me see now. I have to go back to 1929 for that. <laughs> oh, the year of the crash. Well, men were desperate in those days. Yeah. Well, as I remember it, when this man asked Tootsie for a date, she was surprised for a moment. 
But she regained, regained her poise quickly and yelled, wow, and broke two of his ribs. <laughs> Gracie, do you mind if I'm a little more ladylike? I'll just stick two fingers in my mouth and whistle. Yes, give it that bass a touch. Oh, yes, Bill. Now. Well, here I go. You promise I can leave the minute he proposes to me, Grace. Oh, absolutely. Oh, don't worry. You'll be able to leave right away. The biggest open America would know that you were Veronica Lake and not Tootsie Sagwell. He will not. Come in. <laughs> Hi, Gracie. Hi, George. Uh, Bill. Look. Why? Why, Tootsie. Oh, no. <laughs> Tootsie, I can't believe it. You're gorgeous. You're beautiful. I couldn't tell you from Veronica Lake in a thousand years. Really, Bill? Oh, really? Tootsie, when you asked me for a kiss last week, did I say no? I ought to have my head examined. <laughs> Come here, babe. Hey, now, wait a minute. And here's one for the week before. And the week before that. And remember the day you chased me six blocks? Well, I'm standing still now. And remember the time... Bill, Bill, Bill. <laughs> Well, uh, I've got a TL for you. That isn't Tootsie Sagwell at all. Oh, will you stop, George? Why, that Professor Robinson is marvelous. What a transformation. I could swear Tootsie was Veronica Lake. Come on, kiss me, Tootsie. Wait a minute. When are you going to propose? Oh, later, later. I'll get to know you first. Give me a kiss. <laughs> Look, how about propose? Of course, I'll propose. But um, don't you think I should meet your folks first? What for? What for? Well, I can't marry a girl until I'm sure her folks use swan. The new white clothing soap is purer than the finest gales. Money can't buy a purer soap. They use it. Now, will you please propose? Oh, oh, sure, Tootsie. Uh, say, there's just one other thing we should agree on first. Um, well, um, how do you feel about babies? <laughs> babies? Yes, do you, do you, well, do you think they should be bathed with a whole bar of swan or half of them? You see, Swan is great for bathing babies, you know. It's so pure, it's kind to even a baby's tender skin. So you know Swan is just bound to be great for your hands and face, your tub or shower. Look, what are you proposing, marriage or a bath? <laughs> well, gee, Tootsie, a fellow's got to be careful, you know. You, you know what that famous expert on women said. What? Well, he said women have long considered Castile soaps the standard of purity. But Swan is even purer than the finest Castiles. What expert on women said that? Me. <laughs> Bill, will you please hurry up and propose to me? I've got some shopping to do. Oh, all right. Oh, Bill, would you mind proposing on this divan over here? Okay, Gracie, anything you say. But look, Bill, you want to be told... Come on in the library, George. Okay, well, don't yank my arm off. Gracie, is it working? <gasps> yes, Tootsie. I'll leave the door open a crack so I can describe how Bill proposes to you. I thought you'd be interested. <laughs> What's he doing to me? Well... <laughs> You're both, you're both on the divan, and Bill is moving closer to you, closer and closer. Yes. He leans forward to kiss you. Oh, Tootsie Sagwell, you're a big dope. Why? You turned your head away. Oh, I guess I got so excited I didn't know what I was doing. Oh, well, now he's taking your hand in his. He's stroking it with his fingers. Which hand, Gracie? Your right hand. Why? I want to know which one to have goose pimples on. <laughs> and now, now he slips his arm around your waist. He tries to pull your head down on his shoulder, but you hold back. Oh, pull harder, Bill. Pull harder. <laughs> and now, now you're, you're beginning to give in. He tilts your chin up. Oh, Tootsie, he finally did. He kissed you. Oh, did I enjoy it? Oh, Tootsie, you loved it. Now he's proposing. He's on his knees. You look down at him and nod your head. Oh, Tootsie, you accepted him. You're engaged, isn't it wonderful? Yes, this is the happiest moment of my life. Oh, those are tears of joy, huh? Not exactly. My engagement seems to lack the personal touch. Oh, uh, well, I've had enough of this. I'm going out there and put a stop to it. Hey, Bill. Go away, George. Don't disturb me. Hey, you better listen, Goodwin, because you're going to get the shock of your life. That's not Tootsie Sagwell you've been kissing. That's Veronica Lake. Well, I know that. No. You mean... <laughs> you mean... You mean you knew it all the time? Well, what else, brother? I'm no fool. Well, I'll be... <laughs> John, how do you like that? Oh, so that was your game, Mr. Goodwin. You were just putting on an act. Sure. You knew it was me and took advantage of it? That's right. You knew all the time that you were hugging me, kissing me, making love to me? Uh-huh. It was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> 
I'll say. Come on, Bill. Take me home. Okay, Veronica. Well, so help me. That's the last time I'll ever stick my neck oh, out. wait, wait. George, stop them. Oh, you're too late. They're gone. Oh, well, that's the man for you. He just got engaged to Tootsie Stagwell, and he's already running around with another woman. <laughs> now, look, Gracie. Oh, oh, men are all alike. They're all deep. You just can't trust one of them. George Burns, I'm going home to my mother. Me? What did I have to do? Well, I just have a few moments to leave you with this one thought. Swan saves you money. Use it for every soap and water job in the house. In the kitchen for dishes and cleaning, Swan does the work of easily wasted package soaps. So you save there. And in the bathroom for your hands and face, you save again. Because Swan gives you more soap per penny than any of the leading toilet soaps tested. And gives you a soap purer than the finest Castiles. So use Swan and really save. Oh, we're a little late, folks. Good night. The makers of Swan, the new white floating soap, join George and Gracie in inviting you to tune in to your CBS station again next week, same time, when their special guest will be that famous Arkansas traveler, Bob Burns. Remember, George Burns and Gracie Allen, CBS next Tuesday night. And don't forget to listen to Swan's other show, Tommy Riggs and Betty Lou, over another network next Friday night. And now till next week, this is Bill Goodwin saying, Well, I, Swan, how about you? Good night. Veronica Lake is now appearing in Paramount's all-star production, Star Spangled Rhythm. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. From February 16, 1943, George Burns and Gracie Allen on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Thank you so much for listening. Appreciate you so much. And uh, thank this station, support their advertisers. It's their kindness and courtesy that allows us to be here. Our webpage, classicradio.stream. Stream our shows on demand. Learn about building a classic radio collection of your own. You can contact me there. Find our social media links. And if you're so inclined, you can also buy me a coffee. That buy me a coffee money helps us acquire additional classic radio collections. And it also helps us keep our distribution channels up and running. That is at classicradio.stream classicradio.stream. Thank you for tuning in, and please tell all your friends the greatest radio shows of all time are right here at this spot on the dial. Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite radio station. <laughs>